The Peace of Utrecht is a series of peace treaties signed by the belligerents in the War of the Spanish Succession, in the Dutch city of Utrecht between April 1713 and February 1715. Before Charles II of Spain died childless in 1700, he had named his grandnephew Philip as his successor. However, Philip was grandson of Louis XIV of France and also in line for the French throne, and the other major powers in Europe were not willing to tolerate the potential union of two such powerful states. Essentially, the treaties allowed Philip to take the Spanish throne in return for permanently renouncing his claim to the French throne, along with other necessary guarantees that would ensure that France and Spain should not merge, thus preserving the balance of power in Europe. The treaties between several European states, including Spain, Great Britain, France, Portugal, Savoy and the Dutch Republic, helped end the war. The treaties were concluded between the representatives of Louis XIV of France and of his grandson Philip on one hand, and representatives of Anne of Great Britain, Victor Amadeus II of Sardinia, John V of Portugal and the United Provinces of the Netherlands on the other. They marked the end of French ambitions of hegemony in Europe expressed in the wars of Louis XIV, and preserved the European system based on the balance of power. British historian G. M. Trevelyan argues, that treaty, which ushered in the stable and characteristic period of 18th-century civilization, marked the end of danger to Europe from the old French monarchy, and it marked a change of no less significance to the world at large—the maritime, commercial and financial supremacy of Great Britain. <laughs> Negotiations The War of the Spanish Succession was occasioned by the failure of the Habsburg king, Charles II of Spain, to produce an heir. Dispute followed the death of Charles II in 1700, and 14 years of war were the result. France and Great Britain had come to terms in October 1711, when the preliminaries of peace had been signed in London. The preliminaries were based on a tacit acceptance of the partition of Spain's European possessions. Following this, the Congress of Utrecht opened on 29 January 1712, with the British representatives being John Robinson, Bishop of Bristol, and Thomas Wentworth, Lord Strafford. Reluctantly the United Provinces accepted the preliminaries and sent representatives, but Emperor Charles VI refused to do so until he was assured that the preliminaries were not binding. This assurance was given, and so in February the imperial representatives made their appearance. As Philip was not yet recognized as its king, Spain did not at first send plenipotentiaries, but the Duke of Savoy sent one, and the Kingdom of Portugal was represented by Luís da Cunha. One of the first questions discussed was the nature of the guarantees to be given by France and Spain that their crowns would be kept separate, and little progress was made until 10 July 1712, when Philip signed a renunciation, with Great Britain, France and Spain having agreed to a suspension of arms. Armistice covering Spain on 19 August in Paris, the pace of negotiation quickened. The first treaty signed at Utrecht was the truce between France and Portugal on 7 November, followed by the truce between France and Savoy on 14 March 1714. That same day, Spain, Great Britain, France and the Empire agreed to the evacuation of Catalonia and an armistice in Italy. The main treaties of peace followed on of April 1713. These were five separate treaties between France and Great Britain, the Netherlands, Savoy, Prussia and Portugal. Spain under Philip V signed separate peace treaties with Savoy and Great Britain at Utrecht on 13 July. Negotiations at Utrecht dragged on into the next year, for the peace treaty between Spain and the Netherlands was only signed on 26 June 1714 and that between Spain and Portugal on 6 February 1715. Several other treaties came out of the Congress of Utrecht. France signed treaties of commerce and navigation with Great Britain and the Netherlands the 11th of April 1713. Great Britain signed a like treaty with Spain the 9th of December 1713. Topic: <laughs> Principal provisions. The treaty recognized Louis XIV's grandson Philip, Duke of Anjou, as King of Spain as Philip V, thus confirming the succession stipulated in the will of the Charles II of Spain who died in 1700. However, Philip was compelled to renounce for himself and his descendants any right to the French throne. 
In similar fashion various French princelings, including most notably the Duke of Berry Louis XIV's youngest grandson and the Duke of Orléans Louis's nephew, renounced for themselves and their descendants any claim to the Spanish throne. Utrecht marked the rise of Great Britain under Anne and later the House of Hanover, her exploits martial were due to Marlborough. The lucrative trading opportunities afforded to the British were gained at the expense of her allies with the Dutch foregoing a share in the Asiento and the Holy Roman Empire ceding Spain to Philip V and being forced to reinstate the Elector of Bavaria. The Spanish territories in Europe were apportioned, Savoy received Sicily and parts of the Duchy of Milan, while Charles VI the Holy Roman Emperor and Archduke of Austria received the Spanish Netherlands, the Kingdom of Naples, Sardinia, and the bulk of the Duchy of Milan. Portugal had its sovereignty recognized over the lands between the Amazon and Oyapic rivers, in Brazil. In 1715, the Portuguese also recovered Colonia do Sacramento, previously taken by Spain in Uruguay. In addition, under Article 10 of the treaty Spain ceded Gibraltar and Menorca to Great Britain and agreed to give to the British the Asiento, a monopoly on the oceanic slave trade to the Spanish colonies in America. Great Britain imposed to Spain, under Article 13, the preservation of the historical rights of Catalonia given the Catalan support to the Habsburg cause, as well as to British and Dutch military, which, however, were abolished one year later when Barcelona was finally occupied by the Franco-Spanish troops pursuant to the Nueva Planta decrees issued by the Spanish Bourbon King. In North America, France ceded to Great Britain its claims to Newfoundland and to the Hudson's Bay Company territories in Rupert's Land. They also ceded the Acadian colony of Nova Scotia. The formerly partitioned island of St. Kitts was also ceded in its entirety to Britain. France was required to recognize British suzerainty over the Iroquois and commerce with the Far Indians was to be open to traders of all nations. France retained its other pre-war North American possessions, including Ile Saint-Jean now Prince Edward Island, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, as well as Ile Royale now Cape Breton Island, on which it erected the fortress of Loisburg. After the signing of the Utrecht Treaties, the French continued to be at war with Emperor Charles VI and with the Holy Roman Empire itself until 1714, when hostilities, ongoing in the Rhineland, were ended with the treaties of Rastatt and Baden. Peace between Spain and Emperor Charles VI, unsuccessful claimant to the Spanish crown, came only in 1720 with the signing of the Treaty of The Hague. Topic responses to the treaties The treaties' territorial provisions did not go as far as the Whigs in Britain would have liked, considering that the French had made overtures for peace in 1706 and again in 1709. The Whigs considered themselves the heirs of the staunch anti-French policies of William III and the Duke of Marlborough. However, in the Parliament of 1710 the Tories had gained control of the House of Commons, and they wished for an end to Great Britain's participation in a European war. Queen Anne and her advisers had also come to agree. The party in the administration of Robert Harley created Earl of Oxford and Mortimer on 23 May 1711 and the Viscount Bolingbroke proved more flexible at the bargaining table and were characterized by the Whigs as pro-French. Oxford and Bolingbroke persuaded the Queen to create twelve new Tory peers to ensure ratification of the treaty in the House of Lords. The opponents of the treaty tried to rally support under the slogan of No Peace Without Spain. Although the fate of the Spanish Netherlands in particular was of interest to the United Provinces, Dutch influence on the outcome of the negotiations was fairly insignificant, even though the talks were held on their territory. The French negotiator Melchior de Polignac taunted the Dutch with the scathing remark de vous, chez vous, sans vous, meaning that negotiations would be held about you, around you, without you. The fact that Bolingbroke had secretly ordered the British commander, the Duke of Ormond, to withdraw from the Allied forces before the Battle of Denain, informing the French but not the Allies, and the fact that they secretly arrived at separate peace with France was a fait accompli, made the objections of the Allies pointless. In any case, the Dutch achieved their condominium in the Austrian Netherlands with the Austro-Dutch Barrier Treaty of 1715. Topic balance of power The European concept of the balance of power, first mentioned in 1701 by Charles Davenant in Essays on the Balance of Power, became a common topic of debate during the war and the conferences that led to signing of the treaties. Boosted by the 19 April 1709 issue of Daniel Defoe's A Review of the Affairs of France, a periodical that supported the Harley Ministry, the concept was a key factor in British negotiations, and was reflected in the final treaties. This theme would continue to be a significant factor in European politics until the time of the French Revolution and was to resurface in the 19th century. 
Topic see also Disputed status of Gibraltar French Shore Hermann Mall topic References topic Bibliography Bruin, Ranger and Cornelis Haven, eds. Performances of Peace, Utrecht 1713 2015. Churchill, Winston 2002. Marlborough, His Life and Times, B.K., 2, Vols, E and I.V. University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-10635-7 Online abridged edition Gregory, Desmond, Menorca, The Illusory Prize, A History of the British Occupations of Menorca between 1708 and 1802 Associated University Press, 1990 Lecefer, Randall. The Peace of Utrecht and the Balance of Power, Oxford Historical Treaties 10 November 1914 Online Lynn, John A. 1999. The Wars of Louis XIV, 1667–1714. Longman. ISBN 0-582-05629-2 Mowat, Robert Balmain. History of European Diplomacy, 1451–1789 pp 141–54, online pp 165–82. Sickle, Walter. Bolingbroke and His Times, 2 vols, 190102, Volume 1 The Reign of Queen Anne Stanhope, Philip, History of England, Comprising the Reign of Queen Anne until the Peace of Utrecht, London, 1870, Trevelyan, G. M., 1930-34. England under Queen Anne, 3 volumes. Longmans, Green and Co. Topic. External links The Treaties of Utrecht 1713. Brief discussion and extracts of the various treaties on François Veld's Heraldica website, with particular focus on the renunciations and their later reconfirmations. Interpretation of parts of the treaty relating to Gibraltar by the Gibraltar Action Group